Next up, we have Dr. Sanket Pisar. Dr. Sanket Pisar is a laparoscopic gynae surgeon who has his own passion in technology and in his very own invention, which has been featured on several websites and publications. He has also posted several surgical videos showing the efficiency of his invention. Dr. Sanket Pisar has also received awards for his work. This invention, ESVU, has been brought into the market too. Please welcome our final speaker, Dr. Sanket Pesar. Thank you everyone. Thank you TEDx JNS. Thank you my friend Devaj for inviting me here today. And uh, uh, my name is Dr. Sanket Pesar. I am a gynecological laparoscopic surgeon. And which basically means that I do surgeries via the minimal access loop. That means instead of taking large cuts on the skin, I do them using small microsurgical instruments and cameras. My story goes back to about 15 years when I was still doing my training in minimal access surgery. At that time, uh, this patient in concern was undergoing a laparoscopic fibroid removal surgery, also called as a laparoscopic myomectomy. And during this surgery, it is standard surgical practice to inject a little bit of this drug called vasopressin into the fibroid to reduce bleeding as the fibroid is being taken out. So on that day, my chief surgeon injected the standard recommended dose of vasopressin into the patient. And a minute later, this patient's heart just stopped functioning. She had suffered a massive cardiac arrest. We tried our best to revive her, but in vain. The patient was gone. Now one of the bad things about being a surgeon or a doctor is that you sometimes have to break bad news. So we called the patient's husband inside and he came inside with their six year old daughter. How were we ever going to tell this little girl that she would never see her mother anymore ever again? I thought about this incident at that night and for many nights hence and then finally I went to see my chief surgeon. The chief surgeon, he was already distraught at the incident, but he said, look, it's, it's really unfortunate, but these things happen. If only, if only there was some way to find out that we were injecting outside the blood vessels of the fibroid rather than into the blood vessels, that would make it really amazing. Wait, what? Uh, what, what are you trying to say? He, he explained, see the instruments that we use, they are long, metallic, opaque instruments. And because we are not able to actually see whether we have hit a blood vessel or not, we don't really know if we are injecting into a blood vessel, we are just hoping that we aren't injecting into a blood vessel. Now don't get me wrong, we operate at some of the best institutes in the city and patients have access to medical care at par with what they would have in the western world completely. So, with such cutting edge technology, leaving an event like this to chance sounded absolutely incredible. I uh, started finding and digging deeper into journals of critical care medicine and a month later of reading again and again I found out that the problem was very real. Patients were dying all over the world, patients were left paralyzed after injections of this drug and no one had done anything about it. I was amazed, why, why hadn't anyone done anything about this so far? Two months later, I accompanied a friend of mine, his little kid, about 8 year old, he had some problem and we had to take him to the pathology lab for a blood test. As the nurse started to draw blood, the kid asked her, how are you sure you are not going to prick me twice? So the nurse smiled and answered, see this little needle right here, it's got a transparent tip at the end. So if I see blood in that transparent tip, I'll know that I'm in the right place and I won't have to prick you twice. That was my eureka moment. I sat down at night, made a hand sketch of the drawing and I sent it to my professor or my boss in Belgium. He took a look at the design and he said, this looks fantastic, but you're going to have to pull through this by making some modifications and telling someone to make a prototype for you. How exactly do you think you're going to be able to do that? Well, that shouldn't be too difficult, I thought. I'll just speak to people. So the next day I called up the, one of the leading instrument manufacturers in Mumbai and he called me over to his office. So I went there and I explained the idea to him. Ten minutes into my presentation I could hear, I could understand that he wasn't the least bit interested. Come back some other day he told me, we'll, we'll see this on some other time. So I went to see someone else. 
the other person told me uh, look the idea and all is fine but talk how many of these do you think can i sell in the next year and do you have a five year revenue projection chart that i can follow of course i had nothing a third person told me all this is fine but how long have you been been in practice what two years three years how can you possibly think of something that no one else has thought of in the past 50 years i wrote to an international company and the international company wrote back saying that yes your idea does seem plausible but it's too easy to manufacture and so we don't really want to put our brains into something uh, that is so easy to make because it's not a viable investment so i did what most people do best i just gave up and i let the idea lay on my desk lying dust for the next 5 years then one day a small time instrument manufacturing company called me and said we wanted to see you it was the fag end of the day i was really tired of my clinic but i called him and as he went over his inventory i listened uh, unattentively but by leaving he said doc if you want something specially customized for you we can do that too so i called him i showed him my design and he said yeah this looks okay we can do this but uh, i can't give you one or two you will have to place an order for a minimum 100 pieces now one of the other things which is bad about being a doctor in india is that at the starting point of your career uh, you earn a small pittance of what your counterparts in the western world do so placing an order for 100 units would mean that i would set back my dream of owning a car by two more years and that singapore trip would just be a pipe dream so i i came back home he gave it a good thought but finally i decided to place the order and so we placed the order 6 months of going back and forth testing discarding retesting and making it again and 6 months later he brought to me a prototype that sounded good it looked crude but it would do the job and so i started testing once i tested it it worked and it worked like a charm and now i was sure that the medical fraternity would welcome this new development with open arms because this was like this was like cutting edge science home grown in your own backyard but i was wrong i met over a hundred people from my field sometimes i met them over lunch sometimes i met them in conferences sometimes at their clinics and the hundred units that i had made and 100 more i distributed completely free of cost other than the two or three who seemed interested no one else absolutely seemed to care I met one international surgeon of great repute who listened to me, took the device from me and as he made his way to the hotel room, dumped it in the trash can by the elevator. I was flabbergasted. I, I had no idea what to do. And so um, I continued. There was one of my friends standing with me at that time and he said, what if this guy, this hotshot tries to pass off your device as his own? How are you going to prevent that? And so started the entire process of patenting the device. The amount of money that I had to spend on acquiring a patent, I acquired from a bank at an astronomical interest rate. I was working double shifts just to pay the bank loan and with no promise of any tangible return except for the thought that there is a dream which might someday come true. Eight or nine months into this and I was convinced that I should have never taken up this stupid idea to begin with and that this all entire effort of so many years had been a waste. But looking for somewhere, looking for a silver lining to the dark cloud, I kept on and one day one of my friends told me about a competition. This was organized in Bengaluru and people had invited ideas. So they had invited applications from all over the country from innovators to showcase their designs. I applied. And I was judged by a panel of IIT graduates, of hospital management gurus and even someone from the health ministry. And incidentally, I won the silver medal in that category. <laughs> After I won the silver medal, I realized that there was at least someone out there who believed that the idea had some potential. A few days later, to my pleasant surprise, I received a letter and this letter was from the International Society of Gynecological Endoscopy. This is the apex body of gynecological endoscopy in the world and the letter lauded this new development as one of the important, newer, significant achievements in gynecological endoscopy and recommended its use to the entire community. Now this, this was an absolute turning point. Once international appraisal came in, then things started to move quickly. 
there is a <coughs> there is a saying in hindi ghar ki murgi dal barab which means that a prophet is never welcome in his own hometown once international affairs started coming in i started dis- get, receiving calls from instrument manufacturers for exclusive rights to make the needle the international guys who i had contacted they got back saying that they wanted to also they were also interested but i decided to stay with the indian guys who had been with me right from the start surgeons started displaying the device in their youtube videos and their operating rooms as the next important thing in gynecological endoscopy uh the indian association also took notice and i was awarded with the innovator of the year award for the year 2021 <laughs> so that happened and at present today this device a make in india device sells to about 35 countries in the world it is uh, the the principle still remains the same if blood is present you pierce into a different location and aspirate the same thing that the nurse said and if you don't see any blood in the aspirate then you uh, then you inject it and this remarkably increases patient safety today we have for this device stringent quality control approvals from more than 35 countries in the world and these are very difficult to come by so once this was done i'm sorry i think this is called. yeah so once this was done uh, we did not stop there uh, every time someone posts a picture on facebook about how this needle help them i think it is probably one more life that we saved and we remember the eyes of that little girl who was there in the counseling room on that day we also went on to do something more along with industry partners we created a small fund and today this fund helps young innovators realize their dreams and today i think i am able to give back a little bit of what i could not get in showing people the way forward what did i learn from this entire exercise first thing work without a precedent even though it may not seem like the correct thing even if it is not done been done by someone else before you you can still do it ironically this is exactly the opposite of what is taught to us at med school but sometimes this is what is required believe in yourself believe me i have never participated in an elocution or a debate in school at any point of time and yet today i can speak to an audience of thousands of people about my subject all because i am 100% sure of what i am saying so believe in yourself that's very important think deeply students there are a lot of students here think and think deeply some of the more traditional methods of teaching like like writing essays for example you know these make you imagine think and process information though ai and chat gpt are there these cannot do that for you and sometimes this is exactly what is needed think process implement fail and start again keep doing that until the time that you succeed what is success so nowadays all of us are looking for false likes and praises on social media for everything that we do and yet the the glory or the passion of having done something that no one else in the world has ever done before has blunted me to any form of false glory i now do exactly what is right for my patients and slowly all the naysayers they just they just fall in line criticism is good criticism is good and critics are for real because they make you think and sometimes that's a very very good thing in the medical fraternity as a people we are very resistant to change everyone always tells us don't mend what is not broken but is it not broken have you have you looked closely enough whether it is broken or not maybe you have it i still get questions is your device full proof no can it prevent an accident in each and every case of course not but are we one step closer to making this surgery safer for our patients definitely yes and if that's not enough then i don't know what is there are in this audience so many bright young minds and so many of you who will listen to this later on probably online to all of you i urge you to dream and to work hard to achieve because even if you fail you will have had the experience of a lifetime and who knows you might even get invited to a ted talk something and that that is one of the things that money can't buy thank you so much for your patience and for listening thank you for your talk dr sanket we now